Cordelia. No. There's nothing to be afraid of. You're not him. John Mannering's dead! 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 very much like a drink. Hmm? Eddie? Eddie? Fox Stewart from security's handling the search for me. Did you get him this address? Yes, I telephoned Fox Stewart. I left the message. I can't understand why he's not here. Well, he'll come when he thinks the time is right. Look, I've got to get back to my room. We'll just have to play it by ear for a while. Don't worry, I'll be close. 
you any idea what they're planning to do to me? In a way, sooner or later they're going to order me to kill you. I don't want to sound selfish, but Dan made too good a job of it. See you. Andy? You're up a little late yourself, aren't you? I'm a natural born warrior, Andy. Like all warriors, I find sleep hard to come by. Yeah, bit of a nocturnal wanderer yourself. Here. Can you have a drink? Let's go. Now, go ahead. You haven't told me what you're doing down here yet. Well, I hadn't planned to. You figure there's some reason why I should? Last night, you were out of the house, strictly against orders. Now I find you creeping around down here. Why, Eddie? What are you trying to do? Was that you talking tough, Rebel? Or just that old booze? I want to know, Eddie. A lot of little things. Now, don't add up. Don't make any sense. Well, you don't make a whole lot of sense yourself. All right, I'll tell you. I've been with you every minute of the day and night for weeks now. I've got to know your moods and your habits. You're as predictable as sunrise. Now, all of a sudden, you've changed. I just can't put my finger on it. And don't try. Forget it. Hey, why are you being so secretive, Eddie? You're trying to sell us on. Well, I'm going to take you apart for a crack like that. I let you carve me up. I laid it on the line. You still haven't answered my questions. Why were you in that phone box last night? Because I needed fresh air. Look, I'm sick of you breathing down my neck, following me wherever I go. I don't need you anymore. I'm a big boy now. You get the picture? So from now on, I want you to stay out of my way. You bore me, rum dum. Hey! Nobody talks to me like that. You're going to answer some questions. Now! What's going on? Ask the boozer. Pull the gun on me. You got some crazy idea? I'm trying to sell out the deal. No, it's, it's, it's not that. I can't explain exactly. It's... He's been drinking. You say that again. It's not a drink. I warned you to keep off that stuff. No, this, no use it to me. There's no room in this organization for someone who isn't 100% dependable. I've spent a fortune setting this up. And I'm not going to have it ruined by a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Now, you straighten yourself up by the morning. Are you finished? You understand? Do you understand? Go back to your room, Eddie. No, I like you, Rebel. I don't want to lose you. Just remember what I said. I remember. Now please let me explain. In the morning. Not your day, is it? Everything seems to be going wrong. Don't know how or why. I sense it. Or could it be that now we're getting close, you're getting windy? I'm worried, Selena. Poor baby. Did all that rough talk frighten him? Yeah, that makes it better. Now don't go, Selena. Just stay and talk. Talk is all you'll ever be good for. Let go of my arm.
thought you'd never figure it out. How did you work the switch? Never mind, you're not gonna tell anybody. You won't be able to keep it up, you'll make a slip. Travis will know that you're not Eddie. I just have to take that chance. What are you going to do? You're a murderer, Rebel. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I've searched every room in the house. His stuff is still there. Hey, what's all the noise about? We think Rebels run out of us. Oh, well, that figures. He was getting pretty chicken the last time I saw him. What are we going to do about him? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But you can't just let him go. Well, there's no harm in that. He murdered Manring. He can't talk to anybody. Yeah, he's probably holed up somewhere with a bottle scared to show his face. That's right. I don't think we've anything to worry about as far as Mr. Rebels concerned. But we won't take any chances, Selena. Go upstairs and pack. We're moving out? Yes, a bit earlier than planned. Okay. I'll go and pack my bag. Hey, uh, what about that dame we got downstairs? Take her with us. She might be very helpful. Yeah. Okay, I'll be ready in about 10 minutes. Oh, there's one more thing. Where do we go from here? London. I think it's about time you met the rest of the crew, Eddie. Yeah, I think so, too. They're good men. You'll like them. Yeah. Oh, and well, I've got to surprise you, Eddie. Yeah? Yes, one of them is Frank Martin. He tells me you and he were exactly like brothers. Oh, yeah. Known him for years, I gather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Frankie. Yeah, that is a surprise. Well... Upstairs. Ground floor and cellars. Put me down. It's obvious the place has been used recently. Have the others check the outbuildings and grounds. Nobody upstairs, sir. That fool hotel clerk. If only we got Cordelia's message. All right, I want this place thoroughly searched. Get a forensic team out here. Question everybody in the district. The works. Now move! Get some extra men. I think we may be here for quite a while. Ah, I'd say we have a good chance of picking up a train. It's certain Mannering was here. Was here, yes. But where is he now? <laughs> Where's Selena going? To the new apartment. She has the girl. We want to get her under lock and key as soon as possible. Well, where are we going? Well, our main concern is the crown jewels, Eddie. Where else would we be going? To the Tower of London, naturally. <laughs> we 
Where did you find this? Out in the ground, sir. He was uh, tied and gagged under some bushes. Now, what's your part in all this? My part in what? Oh, I see. The uncooperative kind. You untie my hands, please. Well, I can be uncooperative myself. You'll be untied when you've answered a few questions. I have nothing to say. Then I'll wait. I've plenty of time. Do you intend to leave me like this? Her clothes are soaking wet, the ropes cutting into my wrists. I insist that you release me. Insist all you like. You'll get a lot further when you've answered some questions. I don't know how long it takes to sink in. But I repeat, I have nothing to say. I think you have! Huh? Well, what's it going to be? Rubber hose? Bright lights? I don't think so. British police are too well supervised for that kind of violence. It may take a little time, but you'll talk. Believe me, you'll talk until your tongue is blistered. So it looks as though we're going to be here for some time. Do you mind if I sit down? You stand! No, I want to know about John Mannering. He was here, wasn't he? He was kidnapped and brought here, wasn't he? Why? Inform the guard we're ready to make the transfer to the armoured car. Well, there it is, Eddie. A prison for kings and traitors. And a strong room for the symbols of monarchy. into that place. You've got an army or something or an atom bomb. Not quite. But it has been done, you know. A gentleman called Captain Blood once stole the crown jewels. Became quite a hero. The king gave him a pension. <laughs> Two dollars a week when I'm 60 is not quite what I'm after. Quite. How do you plan to get in there? I don't. I expect them to bring them out to me. If my information is correct, it'll be any minute now. Uh, 60 seconds early. The first time they've been out of the tower since the coronation. Where are they taking them? I'll show you. We'd better get ahead of them. Treasury, Eddie. More heavily protected than the Tower of London. What is it they say? Me, Safe as the Bank of England. Well, it won't be by the time we've finished. Right, Every hood in London will have been watching that convoy, Eddie. Watching it and figuring out how to take it. They've got a chance, no chance. You think we have? Yes, Eddie. Those jewels have been brought here to be cleaned and polished. Exactly where we want them. 
Locked up? I don't get it. John Mannering is one of only three people in this country who have immediate and unquestioned access to that vault. Oh. He must have been quite a fella. He was. So he became my key. That's why I gave you that new expensive face, Eddie. I made you my key. The key to King's Ransom. Well, let's get home, shall we? I'm sure you want to talk to that new buddy of yours. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. What's the matter with the music? You don't like it, you don't listen. Not being deaf, I don't have that choice. Have you written on the girl lately? About a half hour ago. She's sleeping like a dog. Oh? Well, she should be awake by now. I'd better take a look at her. By the way, there are some sandwiches in the kitchen for you. Sandwiches? You run a bakery business or something? Every meal, sandwiches. You know, if someone was to give you Cary Grant, you'd put him between two pieces of bread. You don't have to eat them. Thanks, a bunch. I could starve to death around this place. They're gonna let you walk out of here and spot everything now? They'll have a hard time stopping me if you haven't got a chance. Now give me that gun. Don't push your luck. I've just about taken enough from you. You won't get out of this house, but it won't be you that'll stop me. Now move over to that door. Go ahead and make me. Move! Believe me, if you make one sound, I'll shoot. If you doubt it, go ahead and yell! Regret this for the rest of your life. Move. Now open the door. All right, lead on. Move. I warned you. Stop it, Julia. I said, stop it. Oh. You shouldn't have hit me. I should have done more than that. It was stupid, a stupid mistake. I, I could have caught her. Yes, but you let it happen. I couldn't help it. If there had been anybody else but you, Selina, anybody else, I'd have killed them. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help it. Look, you're the only one that matters. You're the only one I can trust without question. Don't fail me again. You should have, shouldn't have hit me. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What are we going to do about that girl? Well, we'll keep her alive till it's all over. She may be useful. Then we all dispose of her. When the time comes, let me do it. Please let me do it. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Hello, Eddie. Hey, nice pad you got here, man. You really live it out. Hi, baby. What did I do? Did I do something? No, 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 no. no it's nothing, Eddie. You came in at the end of a... Small family dispute. Oh. It's all over now, it's all right. Selena, ask Frank to come up, will you? How long is it since you saw Frank, Eddie? Oh, it's quite a while. I expect you've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. I understand that you and he did time together. That's right, did a little stretch. Where was that? Huh? What was the name of the prison? Oh. Um. What's my name? It's a place in... Uh... A place called San Quentin. <laughs> Hi, Frankie. How are you, Eddie? How are you, Eddie? I told you he'd made some changes. You got me a new mug, Frank. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Well, how you like it? It's an improvement, isn't it? Oh, man. If they made you look like Count Dracula, it'd be an improvement. <laughs> it's terrific. It's great working with you again. I see, you, Frank. How you been? Oh, great, Eddie. Just great. Oh, man, it's been a long time. Last time I heard about you, you was mixed up with that mob in Mexico. Oh, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I was doing real great down there, and I got busted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all about you. <laughs> Say, I saw Jackie just before I left the States. Jackie. How's he doing? How's he doing? Oh, what do they do? They cut your brain out when they fixed your face? Jackie Baker's about the sexiest looking dame I ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Baker. Oh, Jackie Baker. He was just married to the dame, that's all. Come on, boy, get with it, get with it. Well, you know, a lot of things have happened since then, Frank. Yeah. <sighs> Ain't it the truth? Hey, you know who else I ran into? No, I'm sorry, gentlemen. You'll have to leave your reminiscences for another time. We've got work to do. Oh, we got plenty of time to go over the old days. Not as much time as you think. I've set the date for the job. Can I make the hit? It's all arranged. When? 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Castle here. Uh, right, sir. Getting on for six. I think we'd better get locked up. Yes, sir. Voltrum. Yes, Mr. Castle is here. It's for you, sir. Mr. John Mannering's secretary. Thank you. Hello, Castle here. Hello, Mr. Castle. This is John Mannering's secretary speaking. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mannering's taking delivery of some pieces tomorrow, and he'd be very grateful if you could store them in your vault for a few days. Well, of course. We're always delighted to accommodate Mr. Mannering. I look forward to seeing him. Uh, what time will you be here? Oh, about 11 o'clock, if that's all right. Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Castle. Goodbye. Like a lamb to the slaughter. It's all set. Good. Now we've got some preparation to do. The rest of the crew will be here for the final briefing at 8 o'clock, but I've some details I want to sort out before they arrive. Oh, uh, Frank, bring up the radio equipment, will you? You'll find it in the basement. Roger, we'll go. Over and out. And Eddie, get into those clothes in the bedroom made up by Manring's tailor, will you? And let's have a look at you. Right. Tired? No, not really. I suppose I'm a bit tensed up like Eddie. Don't worry, it'll all go like clockwork. This time tomorrow night we'll be in Switzerland, and it'll be all over. Yes, yes. <laughs> Put it down over there, Frank. You ain't got enough electronic stuff here to start a small war. Well, in a way, that's exactly what we're doing. Well, how do I look? It's John Mannering. No right. doubt about it. That's pretty sharp. A little square, maybe, but it suits you. Well, that's good. You think I'll, pa you think I'll uh, pass as an antique dealer? It's perfect. Just perfect. Well, I better save these threads. I'll just go check. You know that later, Eddie. We've got some work to do. Get the cars, silly, then, will you? Now. Thank you. We'll start with the approach first. We've got a car identical to the Baron's. Eddie, you drive up outside the vault at 5 to 11. Just to make sure of parking space, we'll have another car outside. It'll pull away as you arrive. He pulls out. I drive right up in front, go into the vault, and do the whole bit, and wait for your move. Yes, I take the phone call, then I contact you, Frank. Yeah, then me and Faber here move in the ambulance about eight minutes after your call. Not about eight minutes, exactly eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we take the stretcher out, go in, and do the business. Right, I'll be there two minutes after you. And when we pull out, we go in the ambulance to where Reynolds is waiting with the rolls. That's it. Anybody else want to come up with the action in the vault? Well, not again. We've done it two dozen times. Right, then, let's have some food. Yeah, the final check. Only eight to five, it'll be sandwiches. I'll just get some cigars. Stuart must have found that piece by now. But on 
less Revel talks, there'll be nothing to give him a lead to hear, so we can't count on help from the outside. We'll manage somehow. Hadn't you better get back in there? So we just have to bide our time. I'll see you. What's the matter, you, Frankie? You act like a man who's waiting to go to the electric chair. <laughs> you know, this a pretty big day. Yeah. Perhaps it should take a long time in there. Yeah, what's it all about? They went into a huddle right after dinner. I don't know. Pretty good on one of those. Oh, not now. Oh, come on, right now. What's the matter? You forgotten how? <laughs> All right. I'll play you a little something. Here's something I used to strum when I was in jail. Mm, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows my worries. Good. You've meeting over? Yes, we've thought up something new. Might be useful. Bring the girl out soon. Well, he plays the guitar pretty good, don't he? Very exhilarating. I bet John Mannering couldn't pick one of these. I bet he couldn't even carry a tune. If he could, I didn't know about it. <laughs> you know. It's a funny thing. Neither could Eddie. What are you talking about? He never had one of those in his hands in his entire life, except for publicity shots. You fooled us all the way along the line, that ring. All the way. Well, you can't win them all. Yeah, now we know it's easy to see how you did it. You should have listened to Rebel. He's smarter than all of you. Well, it's your move. That's right. It's taken a little time, but I think it'll work now. We're going through with it. But instead of using someone who looks like John Mannering, we're using the actual thing. Frank. <laughs> we'll tell you about it in the morning. Easy. Orchestra plan in there. What's been going on? They've been talking in the other room all night. What'd they say? I couldn't make it out. But we must find out what they're up to. Did they tell you anything? No, no. It's a very smooth operation. It's step by step by step. They won't leave us any loopholes. You can count on it. But they can't make you go through with this. If they use you as a hostage. Yes, they can. Oh, John, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't get it. Job. Look, sooner or later they're gonna be off guard for a few seconds. And when that moment comes, you're gonna have to recognize it. Grab it with both hands. And if it doesn't come? Well, ultimately. Ultimately what? Well, they'll have to kill us, they'll have no choice. Right. Come on out. Come on, come on. This was a fancy dress party. Take the girl, Frank. No heroics, Mannering. Where are you taking her? All in good time. You get dressed up as Mannering and then we'll make a move. Come on, move! It's 10.35. I must be going. Be 
careful. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I promise you. Frank, just checking. Do you read me? Can we over loud and clear, baby? We'll check with you once again once we're in position over and out. Tie your hands and gag her. Waiting for your call. Over. I hear you, Frank. Keep your channel open from now on. They should be at the vault now. the emergency card. The blood capsule. Don't bite on it too soon. This is what you're coming to deposit at the vault. Right. And just one final reminder. If you don't make it, you and Cordelia won't be alive to uh, gloat over our failure. Morning, Mr. Mannering, sir. Morning, Mr. Castle is expecting. Yes, sir. Um, uh, this gentleman is with me. Sorry, sir. Shall I have to check with Mr. Castle first, sir? No offense, sir. Mr. Mannering's here, sir. He's got a gentleman he'd like to bring in with him. Right. Send them down. I want, sir. Why don't you slight step inside, sir? Mr. Castle will see you inside there. Thank you. Travis, it's strictly against the regulations to let any unauthorized person into the vaults without permission. But seeing that you're a friend of Mr. Mannering's, I'm sure no one will object. Very good of you. Mr. Travis wants to make certain that his property is well protected. Castle here, I have Mr. Travis and Mr. Mannering with me. Right, sir. Let me assure you, these are the safest vaults in Britain. Probably in the whole of Europe. That's very comforting. Mannering, are you all right? Yes, I'm just, just a little dizzy, that's all. I'll be all right. Is there anything I can get you? No, I'll, I'll be all right. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. This is most impressive. Well, we're rather proud of it. Let's go in. Brooks, you remember Mr. Mannering? Mr. Mannering, nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Brooks. And this is Mr. Travis. Uh, by the way, have you a glass of water for Mr. Mannering? He's feeling a little faint. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, I... I th Mr. Mannering, what's the matter? Okay. In case of emergency, telephone Dr. Son Val Harley, 7321. Under no circumstances, move the patient. I didn't know, Mr. Mann. Have you got a phone down here? Yes, I'll get on to him immediately. We'd better try and make him comfortable. Have you got something to put under his head? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
Dr. Sonbell, please. It's, it's very urgent. Dr. Sonbell speaking. Mr. Mannering? Yes, he's my patient. I understand. I'll have an ambulance round in about five minutes. Good. Oh, and whatever happens, don't move him. Goodbye. Hello, Frank? It's on. Get going. I'm on my way. Good luck. Pulse is fairly weak. I do hope he's going to be all right. And you better warn the guards and open the gates. We don't want to delay the ambulance, man. Yes, yes, of course. Please open up. Right. Straight down those stairs. Look, Marley. Thank heavens you've arrived. In case you're interested, we're still exactly on schedule. I should have shut the foot of the stairs. Finish it.
one. I thought you were dead. Well, it was close. I'm sorry we're so late. Uh, had a bit of trouble with the van. Will you take it? Delivery? Well, this is uh, Mannerings, isn't it? Yes, but as far as I know, we're not expecting it. Well, I don't know about that, Mayor. Down I take my orders from the depot. There's a crate for you. Mr. Mannering didn't say anything. He's in Paris. He'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> All right, for Slam, eh? Well, I suppose we uh, could deliver it again tomorrow. No. Bring it in. Oh, thanks. Uh, will you give us a hand? There you are. That's a crate, sir.
And David didn't come home at all last night? No, I haven't seen him. Well, thanks anyway, Mrs. Taylor. No. No, I didn't like him at all. All right, thank you. Goodbye. coming. Darling. Everything went all right? What do you think? Well, of course it did, perfectly, just as I said it would. Have well, have a look at him. Yeah, I think you better have a look at him. He's still unconscious. Well, he's all right. Just sleeping it off, that's all. Bronny, do we have to? Verity, our plan is working. Now, darling, I know it's been tough on you. I didn't want to have to put him through all this either. It'll soon be over. That's my girl. I know what you've got to do, don't you? Yes. I don't worry about Mannering. He'll do exactly what we tell him to. Yes. There's a Miss Monton to see you. Monton? She says it's urgent. All right, ask her to come in. Just have a seat, please. Mr. Mannering. You are empowered by Sir Robert Ellicott to buy any Renoir painting that comes onto the market. Yes, that's right. I want you to sell him that for a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> what is this, some kind of joke? It's no joke, Mr. Manor. Well, it's good. It's very good. In fact, it had fooled a lot of people. Of course, it's a fake. Of course. I know that. But Sir Robert Ellicott won't. He'll take your word on it. I want you to sell him that fake for a hundred thousand pounds, or David Marlowe gets killed. You think I'm bluffing? That's pretty wild. But if you're not, and you've got him, your next move is to prove it. Oh, yes, that's good. You can talk to him yourself. Can I use your phone? Help yourself. Yes, Mannering's here. Put Marlowe on. Now, just tell him what I told you to. And that's to show you we mean business. Here you go. Now, remember. John? What's going on? I don't know. Listen, uh, John. They've got me up. Not a move like that. I would say, get a move. Look, you just watch. Talk. 
Listen, John. You're to do what the girl says. And they mean what they say. Very good, David. Very good. Hello? Hello? All right. All right, your friends have got him. But then I've got you. You might be worth something in an exchange deal. Do you really think they haven't thought of that? This shop is being watched. I have to be at a certain place in 20 minutes. Try to follow me and they'll know it. I promise you, Mr. Mannering, if you don't obey orders to the letter, they'll do what they say. They'll kill David. We want 100,000 pounds from Sir Robert Elephant. Make the sale, Mr. Mannering. You'll hear from us. I won't be gone long. Fine, Mr. Roddy here. Go ahead. The Baron's left the shop. He's got the picture with him. I don't know where he's headed for. It's not Ellicott's, that's for sure. No, he'll try to locate us first. Pity, really. I suppose I should have told him not to waste his time. Hold it a minute, will you? Everything's going as I expected it to. Stay with him, Hollins, and report in when you've got something. Over and out. You'll never get away with this. Oh, come, 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 my dear David. If you must speak, does it have to be in cliché? Now that you've completed your part in our little scheme, I think it would be safer if you were to take a little sleep. Don't you think? Do you know what you're doing with that thing? Hollins and yourself are paid a great deal of money to obey my orders not to question what I do. Now hold him. Seven. Two. That's it, sir. 
731072. Let's go to trace where that telephone is. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Tam. I appreciate this. Least I can do, my dear fellow. After all, you've done us a few favors. Templeton Green. Oh, yes, go ahead. Ah. Hmm. Well, no need to be expected, I suppose. Thank you. The license number on the girl's car ties up with one stolen in North London last week. What about the fingerprints on that table lighter? Very good, but not on file, I'm afraid. Anything on that telephone number? Just coming, sir. You know, Jim, what beats me is why they want me to sell Sir Robert Ellicott a fake. The cash old boy. No, it's got to be more than that. If it were a straight kidnapping deal, how I got the ransom would be my problem. Mm, seems we're out of luck again. Public call box. Where? In Kent, a place called Lindley. Well, that's near where Sir Robert lives. Oh. Well, that seems rather more than a coincidence. Mannering, this is beginning to interest me. Where do we go from here? Thanks, Tim. I'll be talking to you. I'm still on Mannering's tail. He's definitely headed towards Lindley. We've just turned off the main road. Already? He's moving quicker than we thought. We'll stay on him, Hollins, and we'll take care of one or two things this end. Over and out. hard or you can make it easy, but either way, you're going to tell me something. Let go of me. Where's David Marlowe? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anyone called Marlowe. Don't give me that stuff. You've been tailing me since we left London. Now you're in on this. Where is he? Oh, all right, all right. I'll tell you. Let go. <laughs> Sure you can. I'd like a room. For how long? Oh, day or so. I'm not sure yet. Do you mind standing the register? And um, will you be wanting breakfast? Yes, in my room, please. Of course. Mr. Marilyn. That's right. But we've already reserved you a room. You phoned earlier. Well, I have some very efficient friends. Perhaps they made arrangements for me. This way, please.
Thank you. If there's anything you want, just drink. I hope you enjoy the champagne. Champagne? See you in the morning. I'll bring up your breakfast. what I told you to say, Verity. Hello? This is Mannering. An appointment has been made in your name with Sir Robert Ellicott. 10.30 tomorrow morning. Be there. There's something I think you've forgotten. What if he sees it's a fake? Tell him. No questions. He's to do as he's told. Maniac! Get him out of the bed. Next time, watch him. <coughs> Hello. Waste of time. <laughs> when are you going to finish me off? No, no, it's not going to be like that. You'll be OK. Of course, you're only a... I had hand round here, aren't you? Look, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Hollis told me that it was... Oh, forget it. Where is Hollins? Maybe if you would help me. Oh, no. No, I'm in too deep to quit now. Look, why don't you shut up? Do you have to keep talking? I told you to give him another shot. You kill him, Roddy. Look, you said there was to be no violence. We said unless it could be helped. Like the way you use that knife. I couldn't take the chance. It was either him or me. Do you think I enjoyed doing it? I, I hate violence. But I just couldn't take the chance. Look, Verity, I cannot do this without you. I need you all the way along the line. Darling, I know it's been rough on you, but we've got to see it through now. Tomorrow it'll all be over. Hello, Tamp. Morning, Mannering. Ah, you mind? I left rather early. Go right ahead. Ah, she's stone cold. Must be by now. What'd you find out? Oh, the man in the action, name of Hollins. Small time crook with a couple of prison sentences. Or a chap who's always ready to help out if the money's right. Doesn't sound like a regular gang at all. No, 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 no. obviously amateur. But a very clever one. We got one useful lead. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I just wanted to collect the tray. It's OK, Sarah. Analysis of Holland's shoes showed traces of lime. Mm. Well, certainly from a quarry. I saw a few of those on the way down here. Yeah, the whole area's dotted with them, but my men can make a search. Well, now, wait a minute. Take it easy. Remember, they've still got David. My dear fellow, of course we'll take it easy. But aren't you going to come with us? No. I made contact this morning. I've got an appointment with Sir Robert Ellicott. And you're going to keep it? Somehow it's all part of a scheme, Temp. There's more to this than just ransom. But no matter what, until David's in the clear, I've got to do everything they say. Are you going to try and sell Sir Robert the fake? I have no choice. Luckily, he accepts my judgment without question. Well, for David's sake, let's hope he continues to do so. Go on in, Mannering. I'll get a check. And I'll be right with you.
Oh, sorry. You must be Mallory. That's right. I'm Robbie Harrington, Sir Robert's nephew. Hello. Hello. Do you play? Oh, when I get time. Can I have a try? Well, why not? Perhaps I should sell antiques. You should play golf. Yeah, it could be. So this is Uncle's latest investment visit. You know, if Renoir had painted a pound or dollar sign, Sir Robert would really appreciate art. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Manry. Oh, I see you've already met Roddy. Yes. It always amazes me how a few shillings worth of canvas and paint can turn into a fortune. With a touch of genius, yes. Well, I'll leave all that art nonsense to you. If you tell me something's original and will appreciate in value, well, that's good enough for me. You have to rely on Mannering, don't you, Uncle? The only way you'd know if a painting was a fake would be if the paint was still wet. Here you are, Mannering. A hundred thousand. And let me have the relevant documents sometime. Yes, of course. I'll find my own way out, Sir Robert. Roddy, keep practicing. Do you have to be so darn rude while I've got guests here? Oh, we're not going to have another of those dreary shouting matches, are we, Uncle? I've had about all I can take from you. The feeling's mutual, I assure you. You may be delighted to know that I'm leaving here tomorrow. You don't have the guts. It'll be like all the other times. As soon as the money runs out, you'll be back, crawling and whining. Not this time, Uncle. No, not this time. Really in the money now. Mannering's got the check. Did you find out what had happened to Hollins? Yes, but it's nothing to worry us. He's dead. Oh, nothing to worry us. Well, it was some sort of an accident. There was nothing we could have done about it, but he couldn't have talked, otherwise they would have got on to us by now. In a way, it was a good idea to move Marlow. And now, don't tell Upton anything about Hollins. He's cracking up as it is. He's been asking. Yes, well, I shall just say that he's staying in town until it's all over. Roddy, when do we get the money? I just want this business finished. Everything's been taken care of. You know, I'd love to see dear Uncle's face when he finds that picture's a forgery. Well, he won't, will he? Uh, that was the plan, yes, darling. But, you know, I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking a great deal about it. By the time we're in South America, it won't really make any difference whether he knows or not. It'll be too late by then. I think I'll write him a letter. Having made such a complete fool of him, I couldn't bear it if he didn't know every single detail. Darling, don't worry. Anyway, I'm sure you'd like some recognition for your masterpiece. Now, look, we shouldn't have moved him. He's had too much of that stuff. He is bad. He needs a doctor. Oh, he's quite all right. Yeah? What if he dies on us? Now, snap out of it, both of you. We've got work to do. My dear Mannering, where on earth have you been? You cash a check for £100,000 in a quiet country bank. It's a big deal. No trouble, was that? No trouble at all. They expected me to have the cash waiting. Ah, when we're dealing with people who think of everything. I'll take this and substitute it for one of our special cases. No luck in the quarry, huh? No, I'm afraid not. Several abandoned, but no sign of use. Our men are still searching. Yeah? Thought I saw you come in. 
this was left at the desk. Thank you. By whom? I don't know. One minute the desk was empty and the next minute... Thank you, Sarah. The suspense is killing me. Did your men check the hill field quarry? Yes, one of the abandoned ones. Well, that's the place. And it's payoff time. Right, I'm off. Now, if everything's on schedule, the money should be there at six o'clock. They'll be waiting for us. Do you think I don't know that? Now, give me half an hour's start, and then go to the quarry. You can use my car. Harry, they won't even let me through. Darling, they will. And by the time they decide to move in, it'll be too late. I've thought of everything. We'll both be back here by 8 o'clock at the latest. Oh, you better have the cash. Oh, it'll be there. You watch him. Goodbye, darling. They can't stop us now. I'll see you at the quarry. Roddy! Take care. To report, Markham? No, sir, all very quiet. No sign of life at all. Well, you better take up position in the van. Yes, sir. This place is not going to be easy to cover. Oh, I think we'll manage. We've got men and cars covering every approach road. They should be in position now. You better check them out. Yes. Well, our men are in position, sir. Good. They're on standby as of now. Yes, sir. Control to all cars. Keep your eyes skinned. From now on, report immediately. All cars Satisfied, Manry? You've got a car by the main entrance. They're bound to see it. Oh, yes, they'll see it, all right. But they won't suspect it. Should do it. You're receiving the signal? Loud and clear, sir. Jolly good. Oh, well, even if they do get away from us, which I very much doubt, this little homing device will let us know exactly where they are. Yes, sir. All ready. Time to deliver. I don't know, champ. What's the matter? Don't you think they'll show? Well, they'll show, all right, but it's a question of when and how. They must know we're laying for them. For a hundred thousand, perhaps they think it's worth the chance. Oh, not these cookies. Every move they've made so far has been as carefully calculated as chess. They haven't missed a trick. I don't think they're going to fall for it. How do you think they might do? Well, I don't know. You better tell your men to be ready for something from way out in left field. <laughs> Give me that money. Yeah. Get that van undercover.
That could be it. Car 8 to control. Scott reporting. Car just passed us. Heading down towards the quarry. Thanks, Scott. Pull your car out onto the track. Over and out. Car approaching, sir. Whoever Deuce is mannering. girl who came into the shop. Let her make the pickup. Then we follow her back to her base on the homing device. Case hasn't been moved, sir. She must have taken that money out of the case. She's still got to get out. Hello, all cars, all cars. Except that girl, we've lost them. If they see those cars coming in, they'll know it's a double cross, and that could be rough on David. But if he gets the money, he's got no chance at all. You better order the men. Call in the cars. Control all cars. Move in. Fast.
said, I said. It went wrong, didn't it? 30 seconds, another 30 seconds, like the touched down and got her. What happened? I moved in too quickly. Verity ran and they grabbed her. Well, she'll talk. You know she will. Yes, but we've still got a little time there. Can't you get it into your head the whole thing's turned sour on us? It's finished. Not yet, it hasn't. Not while we have him. Look, I'm getting out. Give me my share of the money. I've had enough of this. That is no money. Yet. I want it now. Everything would have been so much easier if Manring had done what he was told to do. Now he's asked for everything he's going to get. No, no. She's holding up pretty well. I don't know, Tim. Let me take another try at her. Roddy ran out on you. You must know that by now. He didn't have much choice. Well, you planned to kill David as soon as you got that money, didn't you? No. Are you sure? You couldn't have let him go. Yes, we could, as soon as we'd got the money. But he would have seen you all. He could have identified you. So what? By the time he would have been released, we would none of us have been in the country. Why take chances? That's what Roddy would have said. The minute he grabbed David, he must have been prepared to go all the way. Is he dead already? No, no. But you fail. You think Roddy will let him live now? He'll kill him. No, no, and no. And while you're covering up for him, he'll get away. You'll take the rap. He's used you. He loved me. No, he just hates. He hates his uncle. That's what this was all about. Now I want to catch him before he kills David. Where have you got him? Mannering. Well, it's about time you got there. I thought she'd talk ages ago. Where's David? Oh, he's safe. He's with me now. Oh, look, I still want that money. And this time, come alone. All right. Where shall I meet you? You'll find out. Now, on the seat, by the window, there's a radio telephone. Yes, I can see it. Bring that and the money. Drive out of Lindley towards London and keep your receiver open. And Mannering, remember what I said. Alone. All right. Let's do it his way. Give me the case and the money. Larry? Sure. He'll kill you, Mannering. He'll try. This is one of our ticked-up cases. It might be helpful. Take care, take care. Thanks, Tim. Good luck! Now, Mannering. I just passed a white house. Kind of a style in front. Yes, good. I know where you are. You're very near. Right, by 400 
in your head. You can't miss it, it's the only one. Now take that turning and let me know when you have. Okay, I'm on the side road. What now? Keep coming, Henry. There's a farm on your right. It's deserted. Turn off there and drive straight into the barn. Bring the money. That's it. Now put the case down. David first. You're in no position to bargain, Mannering. Put the case down. Oh, David's quite all right. Which is more than I can say for you. You know, I could very easily shoot you just as you stand there. Before you check what's in this case, You look worried, Ruddy. Move away. You must be pretty pleased with yourself. Don't think you can delay me by trying to get me to talk. I'm going to kill you, Mannering, and I'm going to get away with it. David wasn't kidnapped just to see that you went through with your part. He's also my ticket to freedom. And a hundred thousand pounds. So the case worked all right? Yes, it worked. We didn't have time to test it, really, but I didn't think it worth bothering you about at the time. Well, I'll let you take care of things here. Where are you going? I'm going to buy myself a forgery for a hundred thousand pounds. 